than ever it's the unofficial 40 from soonerscoop.com now here's the entire sooner scoop crew carrie josh eddie and bob all right we are back it is the unofficial 40 brought to you by mid first bank we want to uh get that name out there mid first bank uh, your official uh, title sponsor for the unofficial 40 podcast from Soonerscoop.com. Uh, go to midfirst.com slash U40. I was, it took me a second there. My brain Got stopped. It. U40, U40. Uh, sign up for uh, the OU Rewards credit card. Uh, all the information you need there. We'll tell you a little bit more about it. But uh, welcome, 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 guys. Uh, the entire crew is back. Josh is battling the weather. He's got kids at home, which probably means we got to start with like, Damn family story. I didn't say the GD. I just said damn. All right? That's okay. By the way, uh, there's a full moon out right now. Eddie Radosevich, Bob Prisbillo joining us. Of uh, Internet full moon going right now. And I know why it is. Eddie is dealing with a lot of crazy people on Twitter. Like, I, I think somebody <laughs> is conspiring against me. Like, this is some like someone of, is just is out there making up, bit. making up accounts. Somebody is doing a bit on me, and they're uh, well, completely when I saw OU me. Olds, that's the that's the that's the total. Yeah. Stop calling me, people. You need to blame Jason because as soon as he put that Auburn OSU tweet, yeah, out, that is Kersey's fault. Yep. I mean, with that, and I particularly I mean, like the people that just got so upset. You kind of got the Alabama that I tweeted fans. Baker Mayfield was going to return. To college football. He was going to quit NFL football. <laughs> be a grad transfer. And be a grad transfer for Bob Stoops at Auburn. <laughs> like, you idiots. It's just, it, it, you have to laugh you about it. You are being it. trolled. Oh, I have to be. You are being trolled. Uh, anyway, I th- but the reason I think it's going so poorly for you is I looked at our uh, iTunes show page the other day. We have 666 uh, oh, ratings. I think that's what the problem is. <laughs> I, and, and one of the uh, recent reviews is mad at Eddie for his attack on Christianity, so <laughs> that makes total sense. That's fine. Your constant attacks on Christianity. Constant? Yeah. What? Oh, I went to confession on uh, Wednesday, so well, I should be okay. you're a Catholic, not a Christian. I guess that's not true, is it? Now I've pissed <laughs> off all the Catholics. Yes, you have. You're, pro- you're not Protestant. You're Catholic. You're, you're all uh, Christians. Your invitation to Bishop McGinnis High School has been <laughs> now revoked in Mount St. Mary's. Well, they need a quarterback, so they shouldn't be no, revoking No, I think it's anything. a wide receiver. I, I, I got the name wrong, so oh, okay. I, I misspoke on that. Okay. So they've lost a wide receiver for the I year? I believe so. So I the quarterback is there. okay? Yes. Now, there was somebody, that's your there Irish somebody from... Norman North that was hurt? Santa Fe. Santa, Santa Fe. Colin Oliver. Oliver, who's one of the best 2021 kids. He'll That's be too bad, because we were going to go see him, I think, on Friday. Yeah, planned on seeing him Friday against Norman North. Uh, yeah, that's a tough deal. You hate seeing injury, especially this early in the year. Here's one thing I think I want to lead with today. And, it, you know, oh, you fans, I'm sure some will say, uh, who gives a rat's ass? But uh, if you are in the state of Oklahoma or the state of Kansas... There's a chance that you are, and you are an old, <laughs> you're having a really bad week because it was announced by the Big 12 that OSU and Kansas State, two teams that have both appeared on ESPN Plus as part of the new Big 12 deal with ESPN, where it was announced that one football game a year would be aired on ESPN Plus for every school not named Texas or Oklahoma because Texas and Oklahoma have their own third tier rights, uh, contracts with entities. Uh, Texas is ESPN, OU is Fox Sports Southwest or Fox Sports overall. But so OSU played Murray State and they were on Fox or ESPN Plus. Now Kansas State, after just beating Mississippi State, starting three and zero, getting ready to play Oklahoma State. Which if they beat Texas this weekend, that becomes one of the best games in the country next week, and that would be on ESPN Plus or it it is no matter what. And so everybody's like, what the hell have we signed up for to be on streaming servers? Now, I think I know where Eddie's going on this, and and it's just that don't be an old. I'm kind of in between. I'm in between. I understand the argument. I mean, it's It's weird. It's bullshit. It's weird. I would be pissed off if I was an Oklahoma State fan or a Kansas State fan. Like, it, it just, I don't know. I think it's a little bit of, 
Well, that's what you get with being in the Big 12. A little bit of this wouldn't happen to other schools. I, I do kind of agree with the argument that they're not putting OU in Texas on the ESPN Plus. That's just not happening. It's a little bit of a hit to uh, all the signage that we saw at Big 12 Media Days where every game counts. Yeah. Well, not really. If it's, Does it really count if it's streaming? Only I mean, streaming? I'd... Like, if it were on ESPN, like, when you see things are on ESPN 3, like, oh, those poor folks. Yeah. I, I understand like the other ESPN side of it, 3. though, too, that but now you're this, on is just kind of the, this is kind of the sign of the times, isn't it? Just as far as, like, I pay for it, but I don't really use it that much. ESPN is there anyone Plus. listening? We were talking about that on the way to L.A., yeah. weren't we? Is there anyone listening to this podcast? I'm trying to make sure Josh is potted up because uh, we haven't heard from him. Is there anyone on this podcast that doesn't have like Apple TV or Chromecast or Roku or something? Like, you don't Let listen to podcasts if you don't have that stuff, do you? It, I, well, if you've cut cable too, do you get ESPN Plus through YouTube? I, I don't know because I, I, no, I haven't, no, no. You have I haven't to buy, cut the You cord. have to buy it separately. Okay. But you can, you can get it like an app. You know, through your smart TV or Apple TV or Roku. See, I'm an old, I'm an old when it comes to this because I haven't really delved into ESPN Plus as much. Like, I'll watch. I have a some subscription. Things. Yeah, I I have a subscription, but I all I do is just it, you know pay for it every month or whatever. It doesn't. I don't ever really use it. Are you bad at? I mean, this is a, this is not a discussion. I don't know if this is a discussion we want to have, Josh. But are you bad, Eddie, at uh, canceling subscriptions? <laughs> No, uh, I will cancel I'm some terrible stuff, but that. I just some things I just forget about. It's like uh, you know, I a bunch of stuff is just rollover. It's like the MLB package and stuff. I just mm -hmm. know that I'm going to get it every year, so yeah. I don't really ever think about it. But I, I just I don't know. I I don't think that I understand both arguments, both sides of it. It's it's a bad situation. It just sucks for everybody. You'd be a, a the ACC network's not available everywhere. I mean, that's just that's sort of the where we're going. We in, have the ACC direction. network in Oklahoma City on Cox. Yeah, they but they didn't. They had to pick it up like a week into the season. Yeah. Well, and look, you have. Here's the thing. Like, I I went on a big rant about this the other day. Like ESPN has treated cable companies like shit forever. Like overcharged them, demanded you know un, not unreasonable, but demanded fees that were higher than everybody else's because they're ESPN. It's like you remember when the, the Longhorn Network started; they weren't, no one was signing up for it. And ESPN, what they did is they said, "Well, okay, like I know they did this to Cox. They were like, okay, you take Longhorn Network and we'll throw in this, this, and this." Like they they bundled it or whatever, kind of like they do with everything, and so they forced it down Cox's throat basically. Now, I mean, do you think it's going to be any different that ESPN is dealing directly with the consumers? No, they're going to screw you too because this is how they make money. Can you order like if I wanted to if I didn't want to buy a subscription, could you just order the game like a pay per view almost? No, no, you have, you to, have pay to pay the four ninety nine a month, okay. which is a heck of a lot less than sixty dollars on. Yeah. Pay per view I mean, that it used to be. I mean, that's why they've it's got UFC because people, you know, they can sign up and see some UFC stuff that they might have had to pay a hundred dollars for on a card and see it for five bucks. I mean, it is five bucks at the end of the it's day. It's five bucks, yeah. Like we run a service that's five dollars a month. I mean, you, you spend five dollars on things that you probably shouldn't, regardless, you know, throughout the day. Liquor, whatever. Cigarettes, Shit, ready. You pay double for tobacco. Yeah. Yeah, can smoke is like seven dollars. Yeah, it just I don't know. It, it does suck though. Yeah, my father in law can do it. Anybody can do it. He can had pay five. He bucks. had no clue what the heck this was all about when. Yeah, and he's McNeese, a big OSU guy, yes, right? When the McNeese State game came around, he had no clue what the heck he was trying to do. He so did he watch it, it on a computer or did no. he put it on like Apple TV? Yeah, he's got an Apple TV. Okay. It's like, hey, you've got this TV. Like I bought Apple you, TV for my parents. They have Apple TV. He's like, you've got this. All you have to do is sign in here and log in and then you're set. It does look like a good production though. I flipped on, I think it was the McNeese State game uh, while we were doing something. Was that during the, oh, it was during the uh, OU game, wasn't it? Or South, uh, the, the South Dakota, the, South Dakota game. OSU game where I'm I watched, I watched it back or something. Okay. And I, I, it looked like a good presentation at yeah. least i mean it's not like a not a mickey mouse operation i wouldn't say not like the pay-per-view crew you usually get for ou games <laughs> hey there are so it. many sorry. leslie mccastle sorry, sorry ron through so sorry. many mistakes you're good dude with the names it, it was bad 
Yeah, because you're getting guys that aren't full time. Yep. Anyway, I mean, what do you think, Josh? He's, you know, he's alive. <laughs> he's I, I well, you, Carrie would be like, "Well, Josh is not talking." So anyway, we were talking about this. I'm like, "Well, I don't know where I was supposed to dive in there, but uh, you interrupt now, <laughs> like I'm doing now." Yeah. I well, I mean, you get yelled at for interrupting people. Hey, people don't Karen, like that. Stop so. talking over people all the time. Qu- so you just what did it again. Voice? Damn it! <laughs> what was that? Voice? That was old man bitching, ranting, and raving. <laughs> not a redneck. That's just old. I've got no, honestly, I, I was just buying time for Layla to fall asleep. So, you know, I was just hoping my silence would cement her sleep, and then I'm and fine. See, that was the deal. No. I knew if I didn't keep talking, <laughs> like, you probably, there was a good chance you weren't there, and I was just going to look like an idiot because you were dealing with your kids. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you know, I, I, it's never good. Let's not pretend like it is a good, like, you know, like, and it's sad because, like, there's something in your subconscious. Like, you guys go to the game, so you don't have to live through this. But when you hear certain crews, you're like, oh, oh this no. Be a shit show. <laughs> yeah, like, you just know, like, you don't even acknowledge it. Like, it just happens in your brain. You're like, well, I'm not going to expect a lot out of this. So when, you know, they call, you know, Brendan Radley Hiles, Brendan, you know, Buki or something, like, they, they do some weird mistake. Hines. You're like, eh. He was high you, you har- for the yeah. majority of the game. You hardly even notice it. You're just like, eh, whatever. Like, you've become so immune to the, the poorness of it. I do think I've conditioned myself when I'm watching a game. Unless it's somebody that I enjoy listening to doing the play-by-play or color, I just almost kind of tune them out these days. Like, I don't even really listen to it. You're, like, listening to the natural sound in the background? I don't know what I'm listening to. I think I just zone out. <laughs> Do you, like a good example of how scarred I was from the South Dakota game to this week, I literally was telling people on Twitter to listen to Brock Heward. Yeah, I was like, he's saying good things here, and I'm like, I don't know what this says about where I've been. Like, I, I feel like I felt kind of dirty about it. It is strange too because uh, Brock Heward, when he would do ESPN games, I'd be like, ah, Brock Heward, but he kind of elevates Fox a little bit, like. It's not as <laughs> shitty as it, you know, it seems like it used to be whenever he's doing one of the a game on Fox. Anything's great compared to what Booger McFarlane brings to the oh Monday night booth. Oh my god, he's so awful. And anyone's grave they can get Petros Papadakis off my TV. Look, I used to Oh my god. I John Shin for Riley the Norman transcript had the best description ever of <laughs> Petros Papadakis, which is <laughs> I think I've heard he this. is the voice and the head of every serial killer. <laughs> might like, be right. That's why you kill might people be right. because that's what you hear all day, every day. So I, I don't understand his whole spiel. Like I don't understand where he. Like why is he of any interest to me? I don't understand his, how he played at USC. Uh, like he, is he had, a quarterback. I don't know, but I mean, I think he was he, like a fullback. You can't okay. ever tell me he had an athletic head. Like he has an ath- unathletic head now. I don't think there was ever a younger version. You couldn't lift enough neck weight to make that an athletic head. It, yeah, he's just grading. He's terrible. So if Brock Heward takes his spot in Fox games, I'm all for it. But he's still doing games. He's like on a three-man crew. Like they ha- It's like Brady yeah, Quinn. Like- Brock- and here's the thing. Back to Booger McFarlane. I love Joe Tessitore. I thought yes. he was headed for greatness, like and he is getting dragged down because of Booger McFarlane. Booger McFarlane makes him an idiot, basically. He makes Jason Witten look really good. Yeah. It, I did think it was really funny. It was the first week they were doing the uh, doubleheader Monday night games. I get home from post-practice or whatever, and uh, Booger's doing the game, and it was like the second quarter or something. And I swear to God, he said... I, I forgot who it was, but he said, you know, such and such. He's having a great year. After it's like two, two games. quarters in. No, it was two quarters in. <laughs> this was week one. Yes, it was on the doubleheader <laughs> of the Monday night games. That's when I was like, okay, this is not, not going to work. Yeah, my only problem with Booger is he tries to talk too much about offense. I want someone there to talk about offense besides a guy you know is just a defensive guy. I mean, and it might be different because I know him, but like I think Dusty does a really good he job. He does. He does. I think he does a great job. I, there's guys out there that I think Herb Street does a really good job. Like him and Fowler, and maybe it's just because it's so almost nostalgic now when they're doing games together. Mm-hmm. It's, but I think they're still the best of the best when it comes to play by play. It's hard to believe I'm so old I can remember 
when Keith Jackson was the main guy and Musburger was a backup. I think I'm in the minority on this too, but I think you know who's the best still is I think Al Michaels does an unbelievable job. He has not fallen he off. Yeah, I think Chris Collinsworth does a good job. I like which those makes two, me yeah. kind of feel like I'm in the minority. Uh, I think there's a lot well, of see, people that don't the like thing. him. People don't. I mean, people hate on him. Uh, they hate on Tim McCarver. You, you. Well, Tim McCarver's an idiot. <laughs> I don't think Tim McCarver's as bad as people make him out. Tim to McCarver's be. an idiot, but it might be because he works for the Cardinals. But yes, uh, Josh, you you don't like Collinsworth, do you? He's okay. Like I think he comes off as very. He, he's not relatable. Like I, I feel like he's a little pompous in the yeah. way he delivers sometimes. You, um, you know that, but like Chris Collinsworth played in the NFL. Yes, ex- like I feel like he beats you over the head with it. Like, and that, like, that's I, it's a credential. Like, I, it's kind of the opposite of what I was saying with Papadakis. Like, Papadakis, I have to remind myself, like, oh yeah, like Carrie said, it. I was like, that's right, he played at USC. Like, it, it, it slips my mind from time to time. With him, there's no chance that will ever happen. But, uh, but I mean, at the same time, he's good at relaying information. Like, I mean, like he, he's clearly knowledgeable. He just has to remind you all the time of why he is so knowledgeable. I still love Brad Nessler, but now he does all the SEC games, and I ne- I never get a chance yeah. to watch him. I didn't think I Nessler Nessler's fell voice. off when they got rid of him. Like, I just well, Nessler did the 2000 national championship for OU, right? He yep. and Greasy, uh, Greasy. I mean, he was a really good number one. I thought, and I I know people are split, but I I like Musburger. I still like oh, yeah. Musburger. Mm-hmm. I like being. I like that Musburger was on hard knocks just to hear him again but uh, that was a weird deal how he he must just be a handful to deal with because espn just soured on him they just cut him loose i think it might have been a little bit too of a thing that the gambling part no nah, which they well, now just, embrace just which is bizarre things that <laughs> things that he said on air and then i also think that uh there's a reason why he took the Raiders job is because it's in Ve- you know they're going to be moving to Vegas and I think he's that doing the Vegas he didn't want to the, do any travel anymore. Stuff. Yeah. Is there any question that Mrs. McCarron was the beginning of the <laughs> yes. end for him? No. <laughs> and and daughter or daughter-in-law, I and, guess now. And his final game end, ends up being the sh- Sugar Bowl where he's talking about mixing. That's crazy. Is that that was the last game that, he did for That's his last hand? game. Yeah. Dang. Wow. That was a long that, time against ago. Against Auburn. Yeah. I don't I would have guessed that it was like two years ago. I guess it was two years ago. Yeah. 2016. <laughs> 2016 season. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we had a chance to uh, catch up. It's it's a bye week. So we're back from L.A. I, uh, Josh, I'm sorry. Normally we start the podcast by allowing Josh to kind of give his thoughts on the previous game since uh, he wasn't part of the podcast. Now, will you be part of the uh, Texas Tech post game? I, I think I can probably stay up till three. Like I think I can probably do that. The mid afternoon, I can probably make that work. So wow, he's saying no. we're we're going to start at three. Yeah, good luck no, with that. No, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, in, I mean, the Josh's early podcast will Josh's be at three. Well, Art will be like five <laughs> or six. Josh will. Josh now refuses to do post game with us, but he'll do his own. Yeah, just gonna just gonna do it. Me talking about things from you know watching on my TV screen. It'll be amazing. Uh, speaking of, I found a new genre on YouTube this week that I had no idea existed. Granny porn. So, I, oh, I, I believe knew that, that is called existed. gilf. Gilf. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. No, there are grandmas that you wouldn't like to. They're, it's a it's a weird genre. It's like hate watching. <laughs> I think you've said too much. You've, you've indicted yourself. Way too much. <laughs> This 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 reeks of familiarity. It's granny um, ASMR. How about that? Uh, Is that a new genre? Is that a genre? Oh god, that's awful. It's just sounds of them taking anyway. their teeth out. <laughs> oh my oh, 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 Please, Josh, talk. <laughs> Josh, what'd you think about Chip Kelly's offense? <laughs> Old ladies petting cats. <laughs> oh god. The the teeth, I can hear it. That's just awful. Oh, that's uh, why I said it. <laughs> Okay, all right. Let me see if I can get myself back on the tracks. Um, A new no, genre so I, of YouTube porn. God you damn it. <laughs> so I'm trying to look for the highlights of the OU UCLA game. I'm looking on YouTube trying to find. I mean, it's usually the same few guys usually will have have it up like Sunday evening. And I couldn't find it. So I was like, okay. And so I start really looking. I'm doing a deep dive through YouTube. I'm looking through all this stuff. Well, I, they keep saying, like, I find one that's like um, live 
live feed of OU UCLA or live reaction or something, I'm like, okay, I, I guess I can just mute this, them talking about it. But it's not, it's not the game. It's them watching the game with some kind of background behind them, like a football field behind them, and they're just talking to a microphone like all four of us are doing right now, and there's no... There's nothing actually happening other than them talking to the microphone. And they're like, oh, oh, you first, first down, Jalen Hurts run. <laughs> and I'm like, what the sh? Yes. Do people watch this? What were the views? Uh, what were the views on that? It was not good. Oh. There, there were, it, yeah, like, I was like, is this a th- I mean, you know, do we need to get the Sooner Scoop YouTube channel going here on this? I mean, this is, this is a home run. And then I looked, it was like 14 views or something. It was, and it was like three of them had to be me. Because I kept going back to everything like, surely this is video, right? What if we found out that that's what people wanted and that's all Sooner Scoop became is just (laughs) like we found out like we could make a shit ton of money if if we just filmed ourselves watching it. So we'd never actually go to a game again. We'd never travel again. We'd just sit in my living room. With cameras on us as we watch the game and gave reactions. Okay, so it'd be pretty entertaining. The game wasn't on at all. It was just the football field. It's not like the NBA Finals thing where they had like Rachel Nichols, Jalen Rose all sitting, but they were. You could still see the game. It was just no, a, just like, a blank field. It, it was like literally backdrop. like them. Yeah, with them like a backdrop, like a green screen kind of thing behind them, where it was just like a picture of the Rose Bowl behind them, and they're talking into a microphone. And, I mean, I looked at one of them. It was two and a half hours. He did the whole game like this. And, I, and like, he and I, he really would. Like, he'd be talking about something and be like, oh, b- big pass to Charleston Rambo. Okay, so anyway, and we were talking about, you know, and you're like, what the hell is happening here? It was, so it was like Good Morning was America while a football game was going on. Kind of. They were yeah, giving except, you a play-by-play on. Yeah, yeah, except there were no cooking tips, and that was that pissed me off. So. I'd probably watch that during a really like tough loss just to... <laughs> like, that should be the channel. It should be Texas fans watching a loss. Like, and Sooner Scoop should do that. I don't think they would agree to that. Probably not. Well, you record them. They don't know going into the game. Yeah, it's, we could tell them it's, it's Orange Bloods. You can, you don't know it's a loss go, going in. You're just watching the game or talking about the game. I don't know. That sounds like a horrible idea now that I think more about it. Anyway, um, so Josh, did you ever find the game to watch or is that what you're trying to tell us? You never saw the no, game? No, no. I ended up like I obviously watched it live, and then I I had it again. Um, you know, kind of with what you guys were talking about earlier. I'm a Hulu member, so I just pulled it up on Hulu and watched it again. Um, but it I, like with a lot of the stuff I do, it's a lot easier if I do it on my computer than having to like literally. <laughs> I, I, when I watch it on TV, I have to take it back. Like it's not a screenshot; it's actually a camera. And I take a picture of the screen, and then I put it on the site. Like, it's a whole different process. But if I can do it on my computer, life is much easier for everybody. Uh, so, just overall, um, for the game, I mean, obviously, I, I don't know how much you broke down kind of what UCLA was doing to C.D. Lamb, but obviously he, he was a guy that they were going to take him out of the game as much as they could. Uh, and it was almost like they just left – you know, the field open for, for OU to run the ball as much as they did, and that's kind of what they did until they started finally throwing it around a little bit. You know, and I thought a couple – I thought Lincoln Riley's comments in the post game when he said, the ball ended up where we didn't think it was going to several times. Like, you know, like you could tell they thought, like, okay, here here's CD. Like, w- 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 you know, because that had to be – you know, that that's what – 70% of the time going to be your number one read probably for Jalen Hurts. Like, where is CD? What's he doing? Um, for this one, like, you could tell, like, like the deep ball to Rambo. There's no way that's the way they thought that play was going. Like, the, you know, I mean, obviously because it broke down, so that, that's part of it. But, I mean, like, there were so many situations where you could tell UCLA was like, well, we're not going to get beat with that, but, okay, we're going to get murdered with everything else. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, cool. Like, I mean, that's great. And I, and, I, I mean, I guess I get it, but – the thing was, UCLA is one of the few teams Oklahoma's going to face all year that has a corner that could follow C.D. Lamb around and give him trouble. I, I would have went that route and said, you know what, we're going to let Darnay Holmes and C.D. Lamb, we're going to let them figure it out. 
and then everybody yeah, let's else. Let's see if Jalen gonna... Hurts can really throw the ball down the field exactly. accurately over and over and over again. Exactly. That's I I I I mean because you're not. You really thought your other 10 were better than OU's 10? Like, really? Uh, okay. I mean, you Yeah, know, but like instead said, they it's... basically played 9 on 10 all day. Yes, putting the safety yes. over the top on C.D. Lamb. Uh, and with OU's ground game, and I mean, I, it was I, if I'm Trey Sermon and Brooks and Stevenson, I'm feeling a little disrespected about that because that was, that was just a joke with some of the runs they were able to put together. It, almost, it, was, it was almost like they UCLA just said, we're getting beat. Let's just get this over with. Not get embarrassed too bad. Yeah, I mean, and it even it was exclaimed even more when they kicked a field goal down thirty and missed and missed <laughs> and missed. <laughs> you know, guys, they were talking about it during the broadcast. You know, like Lincoln Riley is now what Chip Kelly was in two thousand nine, sure. and they're not wrong. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Can you have envision a world where Lincoln Riley is where Chip Kelly is now? It's a guy that's just kind of checked out almost, it seems like, and that's yeah. that's sad. I yeah, I would imagine everything that he's been through with the NFL, coming back to college. I mean, it's clear, Josh, that he never wanted to deal with recruiting again. Like, he got to the yep. NFL. He saw what it was like to have players supplied for you. He got back to NFL uh, to the NCAA, and he was just like, I don't give a shit about this recruiting stuff. I'm not going to do it. Yep, because that's where he I, I, is. the The big twenty twenty two kid that OU's offered out of Fresno, Relique Brown, was at the game on Saturday. Yeah, night, I saw that, and, and and he tweeted a picture with Chip Kelly, and I was like, I'm kind of surprised Chip Kelly took that picture. <laughs> like, and, I mean, like, and can you ever can you imagine yourself being like, oh, I'm surprised Lincoln Riley would take a picture with that future five star? Like Lincoln Riley's like, how many pictures you want to take? Do you want to do some mug? Do we want to smile a little bit? What are we doing here? Like Kelly, like it you. You know, we've talked about this forever. You can't exist in this day and age of college football if recruiting is not in, on your mind all day, every day. Like, it just has to be. Real quick, Josh, just uh, two things specifically. I know that you pay attention a lot to the line. Uh, there's a lot of questions about the left tackle situation uh, down in Norman right now. Eric Swenson was on the Hot 11. Uh, how, how did you think they played overall as a unit? We talked to Bill Beanabo yesterday. He seemed pretty upbeat. He was a lot more, in a lot better mood than he was last week. Uh, but offensive line, and then uh, I have a question about safety. Um, you can answer the offensive line stuff first. Well, I thought, I mean, obviously, like I said, you, I had Swinson at number 11 in the hot 11. I thought he was really good. Now, I will say there's a little bit of a addendum to that because like, you know, Lincoln talked about, like Bill talked about, it was a bigger defensive front. So he's not facing the same kind of speed guys that he saw those first two weeks. I mean, even if, you know, I know everybody's going to be like, well, speed guys of South Dakota. I don't care, you know, where you're from. If you're 220 pounds, the odds are you're going to move a lot better than a 320-pound guy. That's just, that just physics. But at the same time, I thought he looked really good in the run game, and I thought he did a he was okay in the pass game. Like, I, it, it was solid enough. He did what he needed to do. There wasn't a lot of backside pressure for Jalen Hurts. So, I, like I said, I thought it was a real improvement for him, but we've got to see what's going to happen when he has to go up against a, you know, a guy that is more about being twitchy than being a, you know, complete defensive end. Like those UCLA guys, they want him to play run and, you know, be okay against the pass. They're not, they're not wired to get up field and play seven technique. They're not going to be real wide. That's not the way they work. So, like I said, I, I thought it was a pretty good matchup for Swenson, but at the same time, he did well with that matchup. So I, you know, I'm I think there's more reason to feel optimistic about him than I certainly had last week. It seems like there's a little bit of a calming effect just having Marquise Hayes in there, uh, and Beatabo even said last night he kind of agreed that everything was a little bit more settled there uh, with not everybody having to juggle each other, juggle positions. It's more of a focus on left tackle either. Swenson or Proctor and Hayes is going to take care of things at guard yeah you know he he was the guy if I probably had a number 12 he might have been it hey Hayes is not consistent yet like you, you don't see it all the time but he's just so big that there are times like on that uh, on the fourth down run by Jalen Hurts in the opening drive it's not that Marquise Hayes did an overwhelmingly good job but he was so big, he just kind of turned the UCLA guy just enough to spring hurts, and that was it. That's all he needed. Between, I mean, 
between Hayes and Humphrey, you, you're going to win that battle most of the time. And like I said, Tyrese Robinson had a rough game against UCLA, but he's been really good the first two weeks. So I think the interior of that line is really showing signs of being really, really good. Um, I think Adrian Ely is still a work in progress, but he's so talented. I think he'll get there. I Left tackle, I, I think you've seen flashes at times from both Swinson and Proctor that make you think, okay, you know, you can – you can do okay with this. You may have to help them with a chip or, you know, have a tight end lined up wide of them sometimes. You may have to do a few things to help, but it's show, they're showing signs of being solid enough to where not, it's not a debilitating problem for your offense. It, it's kind of funny that, you know, you when you think of Bill Beatonbow offensive lines, you think, oh, they're just mauling over people. Everybody's getting a pancake. And, well, I mean, they do get their fair share of them. It's almost like they're, they, they become uh, professionals at just what you've kind of said, Josh, just throwing their body in the right place at the right time to key somebody, to, to separate from a five-yard play to a 12-yard play or a 20-yard you know, well, play if, to a 64-yard touchdown. If you look at the replay of Jalen Hurts' first touchdown that went for 30 yards, like Swenson just puts they his body, literally right? yeah. just block off everybody. Yeah. Like, it's impressive to watch. Uh, you know, like I said, they are... The timing is getting better. Like, and I, I think I, I can't help but think, you know, I watched that interview you guys did with Bill last night, and I've got to think that's part of it. Like, that counter is so fundamental to what OU does offensively, and it's such a hard play to run. I mean, like, I know it seems so simple, like, oh, you just pull the backside, and it, it doesn't work like that. I mean, because it is, it's so orchestrated. And when you're shuffling guys in and out, and everybody does things a little bit differently, and everybody's timing's a little different, it's hard to develop that you know, that repetition that the previous group had because they played 50 games together. They all knew each other so well. They knew everything that they were doing. So even if a guy kind of subbed in or subbed out, they kind of knew what they were doing. But you saw it against UCLA. There was better recognition of, okay, as soon as this guy comes across my face, I'm going to pick him up. That guy will get that guy. You just saw less little mental errors. And like I said, that's, you know, I I know OU fans have been – Kind of, I don't, concerned is not the right word because the offensive line play has been pretty good, all things considered, but it wasn't what it has been. But you got to understand, I mean, these are a lot of young guys, and with the exception of Proctor and Creed, nobody on the offensive line have played any minutes of note. I know uh, Eddie mentioned the safeties. We want to get to that, and I think that's also going to feed into a bigger issue, which is something Bob wrote about, uh, and that is the number of snaps that people are taking. But first, I want to remind you guys, uh, our new presenting sponsor this year, uh, MidFirst Bank. We appreciate them being on board. Uh, MidFirstBank.com slash U40. MidFirstBank.com slash U40. Go to that URL, and uh, you can apply for the uh, OU credit card. They're the exclusive provider for the OU credit card. They've got their OU Rewards credit card. You can apply uh, right there at that website, midfirst do, midfirst.com slash U40. Uh, you can earn 15,000 bonus points by spending $1,000 in the first 90 days. Uh, the uh, bonus points can be used for $150 statement credit or used towards your choice of rewards. Uh, you can redeem for cash back, gift cards, merchandise travel. Uh, and also, uh, when you have an OU uh, rewards credit card, every time that you use it, um, you get signed up or uh, register for the OU, uh, the Ultimate Game Day Experience, which is two VIP tickets, uh, and then you get a tour of the facilities, and uh, it, it's a great deal. So, it, Plus, you get a $500 gift card uh, from MidFirst Bank. So go sign up. Uh, it's the, like I said, it's the exclusive uh, OU credit card. And uh, they, MidFirst Bank does a great job of supporting athletics at the University of Oklahoma. And we're proud to have them as our uh, presenting sponsor for the Unofficial 40 podcast. So MidFirst.com slash U40. Go to that uh, website and sign up now. Uh, all right, safety play, obviously not great. Uh, and Josh, feel free kind of just to give your breakdown of what you saw against UCLA first. Yeah, you know, it, it's... It's one of those things where I'm so torn because I was so in on Taylor and, Taylor and Turner Yale coming into the season, and, man, it just hadn't been there. Like, I, I'm seeing missed tackles. I'm seeing him. Like, and it looks like almost the opposite of everybody else in the defense. He looks indecisive. And if there's anything I could think that was his game as a high school guy, it was being decisive. Like, he was, you know, full steam ahead at everything. Like, I, you know, for an example – 
that people can relate to and understand, there was some Brandon Everidge in his game. Like, I mean, uh, there, there was some just, I don't really care what happens to my body. I'm going to come with a Thor. Like, I mean, he was just very explosive in everything he did. And I thought you would get some of that. And so far, man, it just has not been the case. And I, I don't know if that's going to change. I don't know why it's been so slow to develop. Um, and then you throw in Pat Fields, who, you know, we talked about it all off season. The thing that I got behind with Pat Fields was he's going to be where you want him to be. He's going to be steady. He's going to be a calming force for that defense because that's his demeanor. That's who Pat is. And, man, that's been anything but. Because, I mean, you look at the problems, and when you see Oklahoma giving up big gash plays, I, too often it's been – uh, an assignment that sure looks like it was Pat's. And so, you know, like I said, I don't know what to make of that yet because, like I said, it's one of those things where I don't – you have to understand that we sitting there at home, you guys sit at the game, we don't know the call. We don't know everything that they're reading and looking at. And I, so you have to understand it. But at some point, there is a consistent problem, and it seems to be connected to the two safeties because the other nine guys, with with Trey Brown being a little bit of an odd even exception – have looked pretty good or playing pretty good football. And what's so weird about the safety spot is Fields and Turner Yell, coming off the South Dakota game, both said they had a little internal meeting saying, we know we got to be better. And then that was the performance they put out after realizing that they weren't playing up to par, and then they probably both played their worst game of the season. Well, and, and one thing you wrote about, and it's it's striking, like when you look at the pro football focus stats this week and you look at total number of snaps, and uh, Josh had put them on the website, the thing about Alex Grinch is he is preaching, uh, you know, substitution. He, he wants guys to get 40 to 50 snaps a game, max. I mean, that's – and really 40, I would say, is probably what he wants right. for max for most guys. Uh, and you can, Bob, you can kind of explain what the, the thinking. Actually, uh, let me go to Alex Grinch, and uh, we can hear from him. It's a little bit long, uh, but it gives his kind of his whole spiel on uh, exactly what he's trying to do with subs. And I know, uh, Josh, you probably saw this online a little bit on Twitter during the game, but like people really freaking out when Kenneth Murray leaves the game early and Brian Mead comes in because they wonder, is he hurt? What's going on? It, it just doesn't it doesn't compute. Like you're just not and and I said this to kind of pose it this way to Kenneth when I talked to him this week. I was like, you, you guys fought and scrapped and claw clawed your way to making any any and every play you could. You didn't have a lot of playmakers. And that was always something Mike Stoops talked about. We need more playmakers. We need so it's like it was always in your head like this team just doesn't have enough players. They don't have enough guys to make plays. Uh what Alex Grinch is saying is we need more guys to make plays and we need guys to be fresher throughout games. And so when you see guys like the big 12 defensive player of the year, leave the game early, you're like, what the hell are you doing there? You don't have any players out there as it is. And you're taking one of the best ones off the field. It makes, I can understand why people freak out. I mean, I'm not going to do the redneck voice. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not, oh, I, I totally understand where you're coming. I'm standing from. down on the field. My first immediate thought when I see Brian Mead out there is, oh my God, when did Kenneth Murray get hurt? Yeah. What happened? I look immediately to the sidelines. Remember after the uh, South Dakota game, I felt like an idiot because I asked Lincoln Riley, like, what's wrong with Creed Humphrey? He's like, nothing. It's like, we just wanted to play Ian McIver because we don't have any backup. So uh, here is Alex Grinch in my conversation with him about all this stuff uh, on Monday. Dude, you've been. I don't know, telling us, setting us up just about substitutions, finding the best 22 and stuff like that. But no. three games in, I'm going to tell you, you're freaking people out by substituting early for guys like Kenneth Murray. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I know you don't care about all that stuff, but sure. I mean, could you just kind of talk to like what you've said it before, but just kind of your thinking on what that does to put someone like Brian Mead in in that situation? Yeah, I, I think uh, there's a number of things to it. N number one, you know, there's only one true way to develop depth. And it, it, it's developing guys under the lights, on the stage, in the moment, um, and and it's it's hard to manufacture those reps in practice. That that's a piece of it. And then you know uh, the the next side of it is is everybody's a better football player. Our sport is this way, playing 40 snaps as opposed to 80 snaps. It just the 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 the, the rep count has impact. 
Um, and not every sport is that, that way. You get more bats in baseball than, than you have a tendency to, to, from an improvement standpoint. But in, in, in ours, it's just simply not that way. And so we want max reps. We want uh, elite reps. And we want guys feeling like survival on game days is not the ultimate aim. It, it's to play at a high level um, and, and to uh, – you know, focus on you know effort execution on every every single rep, and so in any event, that that's uh, um, you know kind of how we how we built this thing in our past, and so you know the biggest thing is oh you can't you know the, the drop off can't be uh, in, in any greater than uh, we're we're willing to kind of be accept, accepting of, and a lot of it stems from production. You know, if if they got to earn the right over the course of the week, and basically we have a meeting every Thursday and say. And, and, and develop a rep count for every single guy. Does it go that way every single week? Exactly how we draw it up? No, the you know the opponent has a has a vote. The, the kind of the, the the way the game goes, you know, can dictate some of those things. But we want to play more than, than less, and we'd rather leave the game and say we rotated too much than than not enough. Um, and so we'll continue to do so as long as these guys earn the right uh, over the course of practice. And through three games, you're going to see some guys that got in week one that didn't get in week three because and it has everything to do with, the, with uh, Monday through Thursday. Now, I'm going to say this. Like, when Lincoln Riley came in, I, it's not like he reinvented the wheel, but he just did a lot of stuff that I remembered other successful guys doing. And I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I remember when this coach did that or Kevin Wilson, you know, talked about this or – um, you know, whatever. And so, but what he did worked and, and it brought, you know, things about Lincoln Riley that, that make him special, I don't even know about. I mean, that's really inside football stuff. With Alex Grinch, like, I feel like he's completely reinventing the wheel from everything that we knew about defense because I've never seen anybody employ these kind of tactics before in terms of substitution patterns and you know, he's very big on analytics, and, you know, he came in immediately talking about, you know, so many turnovers equal wins. Um, it's just, I'm I'm constantly kind of like, wow, this guy really is kind of turning my head into what I thought defense was. The one, the one thing that sticks out to me is they both, when talking about Riley and Grinch, they both not just believe in their system, they live their system. Mm-hmm. Like, that is their shit. They, yeah. they, there's nothing that's going to take them away from, from what they do and because they believe in it because it works. And he's right about like the only way you're going to know is if you put them out there. I mean, how much better do you feel about a Brian Osimo, a Nick Benito, a Jalen Redmond, a a Jaden Davis, because they had a chance to go out there when it felt like in years past, you'd be, it'd be what, like 52 to 17 in the fourth quarter. And you're saying, get that guy in because we need to know what he can do. Now I've seen these guys come in in the second quarter and you're believing, okay, wait a minute, they can play now, they can play in the future. They they can keep this rotation going for as long as it keeps working. And, and, and they have more belief and more trust because of what they've seen from those guys when they've actually put them out there. And here's the other side of the coin. For, coin. for anyone saying, uh, why don't you play this guy or why don't you play that guy? That was great stuff. Like, Alex Grinch is, is he said it many times, like, we want to be we want to be blamed for rotating too much than not enough like that is everything that he believes in like he wants to rotate 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 like he he wants to put you on the field so if you're robert barnes if you're levi draper whoever like i know there are people like well i want to see them why aren't they playing and alex Grinch will tell you i want to play him like that's what i want i want them to be out on the field but they're not showing me enough on Mondays and Tuesdays in practice for me to do that. Like, he's not against you. Like, he's not holding a grudge. He's not. He wants you to be on the field. And that might be the most alarming thing yeah. about safety. Then, yeah. If that's the, and we all believe that's that's sure. the case. He's meaning what what he's saying is if Turner Yell and Pat Fields are the two players that play the most snaps of anyone on defense, and they're not playing at a high level. They don't know where to go after that. Does it kind of show you that like Justin Broyles had a shitty week of practice too? Because he played a week ago, but then he wasn't the answer for them against UCLA. No, he he made the play against the Bruins. Yeah, I thought he played well against UCLA. He made the fourth the the fourth down breakup. Oh, that's right. Uh, I blogged or I it, was live tweeting about that. I just I have no mind left after <laughs> being shot at. It almost makes you wonder if By the Turner way, Yellen real quick, Fields in a way have played well in practice and so they get their playing time out there on the field obviously 
but where's the misconnect coming when they well, do get on the field? Well, here's the thing. Field? I mean, you look at the, the play chart. It has and, to be a confidence and, thing, doesn't it? Well, here's the thing. Like, if if you really, if it really is true that snaps, fewer snaps lead to better play. Bingo. Look at the snap totals for the game. The three uh, safeties had the most snaps. Uh, Brennan Radley House, 59 snaps to lead all defensive players. Delarian Turner yelled number two at 53 snaps, tied with Pat Fields, who had 53. So those so, guys are playing like if they played 40, they'd probably be, they might be better they're producing at a better because, rate. Yes. yes. Exactly. So they need guys. I mean, they need Robert Barnes to step up. They need other guys, you know, at say they need uh, uh, Jeremiah Cradell. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, do you do you turn to the young guys it, during this bye week? It almost feels like they're going to get some kind of opportunity. You Woody get an opportunity Washington, every week. Cordell, Actually, yeah, exactly. Grinch kind of hinted to me like they might move some guys if, you know, if so that and, makes and me I don't think know, Jordan Parker. Yeah, Jordan Parker's the first what does guy that, that came do to mind. For, uh, I mean, does that mean that Jane Davis has played so well that they're going to move a corner? May, it might mean that. I yeah. mean, I'm not discounting anything. Where are you on that, Josh? You know, my my problem with, and I don't mind the Parker move, but it feels kind of, I don't know, like almost against what they've done so far where they've been very much, this is our plan, we know what we want to do, we know where these guys, we want them to be. You, Jordan Parker was a safety, and they moved him away from yeah, there. Yeah. Right. So, like, it almost feels like we saw that, we don't really like it, and now it's so bad at safety, maybe we have to go back to that conversation. The guy that I really would like to see uh, get another look back there, and, again, we don't know what happens in practice, so it's hard to say how far that's gone, but Jeremiah Cradell is a guy that has the frame, a guy that has the, the athleticism they're looking for back there, He's playing Nickelback, but he's not getting any time behind Buki and Sylvie. Why not give him a look on the off week at safety and just see? I mean, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But it's not like it's taken away from his mental reps at nickel when he's playing. You know, I think he played against South Dakota, and I don't think he's played in any other games. So, Josh, you look at those three freshmen, Cradell, Woody Washington, and J- Jamal Moore. You think it's Cradell that has the best shot of making an impact during this season? I, you know, Woody is the only one that's played there. And he played, I, again, I don't think he played against UCLA. I think it was only against Correct. South Dakota. Right, yep. And I thought, when I first saw it, like when I watched the game, I thought, oh, that, that wasn't very good. Because he had one moment where I can't remember what it was. He missed a tackle. There was something that was kind of ugly. And that's what caught my attention. But when I came back, he had played more than I realized. He came in earlier in that game than I thought he did. And I thought he showed some good stuff. Like, it wasn't, you know, like, oh, we got to start him now kind of stuff. It wasn't what Jaden Davis is doing. But it was good enough to say, okay, you know, if you get a chance, you want to take another look at that guy. And so I don't know if he was in. I don't know if he was part of the, you know, the, the crew that traveled. And I, I'm guessing he probably wasn't. Um, but he would be a guy I would like to get a look just as a guy that's already been there. And like you guys have talked about, physically is more impressive than either of the starters already. Uh, I mean, here's a, here's a, this is really interesting to me. It's like, if you look at going back to pro football focus, you look at the players who had the highest, just defensive ranking statistic, uh, Neville Gallimore, 33 snaps, the highest ranked at defensive totals at 84.1, uh, next to him, Jalen Redmond, 30 or 29 snaps for him. So I mean, like you look at these guys that have the higher scores, um, Jaden Davis, 25 snaps, 78.8. Um, uh, Isaiah Thomas, actually really high, 10 snaps, 76. So, but you really do, when you get up closer to the top of this chart, other than, you know, guys like Ronnie Perkins, who played, I mean, Ronnie Perkins played 44 snaps, and he had, a you know, high ratings across the board. He just needs, like, like, Marcus Stripling only needs to give, like, 10 snaps a game. Well, this is sounding a lot like Kenneth Mann from two years ago when he was great in pass rushing mm-hmm. and then came a full-time starter and disappeared. Yeah, trailed off when significantly. You can, yeah, when you can just do your 15 to 20, give everything you've got in that, you'll make more impact in playing 40 or 50 and just being average most of the way. That defensive line group has been really, really solid. I think I've been even a little surprised just as far as the production that they've gotten. 
uh, through the first three games. And I know they haven't played just amazing offensive lines, but it's been constant. Whether they make the play or not, and Alex Grinch talked about it a little bit on Monday just as far as they have guys back there. Now you now you got to start thinking about making the play. They, they ha- they've had guys that are in position to make TFLs, and it's I, it's a good problem to have. I mean, it's better than the other problem if you, you don't have guys back there. And I think that, in a way, because the defensive line's been so good and because they do have a good, solid rotation up there, it's allowed them to get more guys out on the field as far as, uh, you know, your, your more linebackers or whoever. I think it, it has certainly helped. I think it all goes hand in hand. Um, I mean, yeah, but I mean, back to the safety real quick. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Alex Grinch takes a lot of pride in that because he does coach that position. You can tell he kind of takes it personally that they're not playing well uh, and that, you know, he hasn't been able to develop backups. But, I mean, let's face it, the, the, the one finger you point to, I mean, you take your finger, if you're going to point at one person, it's Robert Barnes. I mean, yeah, like he's I, the guy. I thought he was the answer. He's the guy that 17. should be the answer for you. He's he, played. He's played well. I don't know if he's having a hard time coming back from the way his season ended last year. It's a mental thing. But you guys have talked a lot about you talk- know how he mopes off the field and things yeah, like that. He runs off the field when the clock hits zero. Very low body language. He is just running straight to the tunnel, not celebrating. I mean, I'm not saying everyone has to celebrate and, and laugh and joke, but it's like Jeffrey Meade from a couple years ago, just straight off the field. Just checked out. I think that's the other way. To, that's yeah. the only way you well, can say it. You better check in during the bye week or he might be done. And then uh, Josh kind of want to bring this recruiting because everyone's been saying they're only taking one safety, Bryson Washington. I get a lot of these guys on the roster are not seniors, but with the way things are going, do you think Alex starts thinking about maybe looking at a second guy starting with this bye week? You know, I, I really do. And I, I've mentioned a guy, uh, I mentioned him last week, and then he's come up a few times since. And it is a, a, a SEC safety. I mean, Oklahoma is still, you know, I, I think people sometimes when I say, okay, th- guys, this is not going to happen or this can't happen, it's my fault for saying things like that because, frankly, stuff changes. But, I mean, I will get something that in the summer is absolutely not going to happen. That door is closed. There's no way. And then in October, you're like, well, you know, like you just start hearing things that have changed. So the guy that I'm hearing right now that I know Oklahoma is working to bring in for a visit, I know he's talking. You know, it's not just OU's hoping this happens. There is some reason to think it will happen. Is Keyshawn Lawrence, uh, Tennessee safety commitment from Nashville. Now, obviously, he's from Nashville. He's committed to Tennessee. There is a lot of reason to think that's a closed door. And, I, and I've talked to a few people that have told me, you know, he was supposed to go to South Carolina this weekend and watch them play Alabama, or last weekend and watch them play Alabama. No, he no-showed on South Carolina. That may be what happens here. It may amount to nothing. But the farther Tennessee falls into the dumpster, the better Oklahoma's chances become. And, if, again, if you can show – I mean, that that's the interesting part about the problem Oklahoma has right now. Look at this defense. We're, you know, Oklahoma's playing pretty good football. We we can sell you on. Look at our front seven. Look what they're doing. Look at our corners. Parnell Motley is starting to play like maybe he might get drafted. I mean, like it, it's all happening pretty fast. But our safeties are a problem. Imagine if you came into this defense, it's going to return a lot, and you you can help fix our problem. You we we need safety so bad. Sure, we've got Bryson. But who knows how ready he's going to be. You can come in and be that guy, too. And we don't have a lot to stand in your way. And that, that's a pitch you can sell. And, you know, we, we all know from some of the stuff that other recruits have attributed to Alex Grinch, he's not afraid to make that pitch. He's not afraid to say, you're better than the talent we have here. Come take a spot. And, uh, like I said, that kind of goes, like you guys were talking earlier about, Alex Grinch lives this methodology. He, I mean, from recruiting on in, if you can come in and take a job, come take it. Like, they're not going to worry about that. And so I think he is the guy that right now is kind of the focus. Now, I, I'm i not sure if it's become a situation where Oklahoma is definitely taking a second safety. But you have to think, like you said, Robert Barnes, there's a few other guys that you think, surely they're going to see the writing on the wall here. And then, John, I'm not sure you have the answer. I'm not sure you could have the answer. But because of what you said – based on what we heard in the summer, is just one safety. 
We saw Jacoby Covington commit to Washington. Do you think there's any chance they circle back? And if they do, do you think there's any chance he listens after the way things went down in the in in the summer? I would be surprised because while I think Jacoby handled that really maturely when a lot of guys would have been like, oh, screw OU, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, I know publicly he was saying, yeah, I'm down to OU and Washington and blah, 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 you know, whatever. I know that at that point Oklahoma was not really talking with him. And I, I whatever, you know, OU fans may think of that or whatever, you know, the case may be, there's no way Jacoby didn't notice that whether he handled it nicely or not, he noticed it. And I, it's just tough for me to believe that Oklahoma is going to be able to come back in and be like, you know what? That whole thing where we didn't talk to you for my four fault. months. It's, it's, come on. Yeah, like, come my, on. My bad. Yeah. Like we thought we were going to be pretty good at safety and we've just figured out that that's not actually the case. So I, you know, I, I don't see that coming together, but you know, it's recruiting crazier things have happened. Okay. Uh, I want to remind you guys, a lot of people, uh, I know use the uh, SeatGeek app as they uh, were getting tickets for UCLA because we heard from uh, SeatGeek and said the response was fantastic. So appreciate you guys supporting the podcast by supporting SeatGeek. Uh, and uh, here's the thing. Uh, if you've ever used the app, if you haven't used the app, go download it. Uh, you look at the app store. There's over 50,000 five-star reviews for the app. Uh, great customer satisfaction. Uh, and uh, it, it's just a better process. I mean, you can go to some of these sites... You get lost, you know, searching around, trying to figure out what you, what's what. Uh, SeatGeek customizes it all for you. They, they pull together millions of tickets from all over the web. Uh, and then they rate each deal on a scale from 1 to 10. So, like, you see, like, a green dot means a really good deal. A red dot shows you tickets that are overpriced. Uh, I know a lot of people, oh, you Texas is going to be a really tough ticket this year. So, uh, you're probably going to pay, unless Oklahoma State pulls you upset this weekend, um, even if that's the case, it's going to be a tough ticket because uh, even with the stadium bigger, you're just not getting those real. You might as well just go ahead, get on SeatGeek, start looking now, uh, and uh, get your OU Texas tickets in hand uh, while you can. So uh, you can get, you can see the Cotton Bowl, you can see where you want to sit, you can sit on the OU side. Uh, SeatGeek breaks down all the details, and every purchase is fully guaranteed, so you can shop with t- shop for tickets with confidence. Now I've used it. Uh, Eddie has used it to buy tickets in Chicago for the Cubs games. You said it was easy to do. Yeah, it was really easy. All you had to do was just log on, decide where you want to sit, and pow. Uh, So uh, do what Eddie and I do for uh, concerts even. It's great as well. Now, SeatGeek will even give you $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you need to do is use our promo code, uh, that's SCOOP. So download the SeatGeek app today. Use promo code SCOOP. For $10 off on your first purchase, that's promo code SCOOP for $10 off your first purchase at SeatGeek and SeatGeek.com. Okay, um, I don't I don't know, really, I mean, with the bye week coming up, we'll find out, you know, kind of what changes are made going into Texas Tech, but boy, I mean, Texas Tech loses Alan Bowman uh, since you, know, you played UCLA. Uh, they've still got Jet Duffy there, which is, as Barry Trammell said yesterday, is a is great name from the 50s. Is Jet Duffy there? Yeah. Is he? That's what I'm... I'm pretty sure he's still there. I asked that, and somebody said, yeah, I didn't look it up myself. I'm all in on uh, Maverick McIver. Maverick, it's time for the Maverick. Uh, it's always time for Maverick. I'm trying to go to the roster. I'm I'm intrigued by this are weekend. Are you questioning me slate. just because you want Maverick to be the quarterback? <laughs> I just, just I thought he got kicked out of school. I I have no idea. He's had off the field issues. He's had on the field where he hasn't produced. It's sort of it'd be sort of amazing that he's still hanging around. I guess. Yeah, he's on the he's on the roster at this point. God, you son of a bitch! Made me question myself. So okay. did he play I, I, after Bowman got hurt? No. Who played? The senior, I think, came okay. in for a series. Maverick McIver? McIver. McIver. Badass name. Most tech when name is, of all time. He does look like he can carry that name, too. I mean. D- did Bowman, I mean, like, was that? did that become official? Did I miss it? Like, I yes. know that yeah, there was that report from the tech, school paper. Texas Tech officially released okay. it later in the day. 
Yeah, they had okay. the, they like strong armed the school paper to like that's take down a tweet like, and stuff. Right? <laughs> you know they did. Of course, that's what happened. Every kid in that class should get an F. They should be dismissed <laughs> from the journalism school. Just get rid of the dean. Yeah. Too, while you're at it. Yeah, might as well. But I'm interested in the games this weekend, though. Just for oh, yeah. Big like, a I, lot of good ones. I think that Texas game is particularly intriguing just for the fact that I think I know about Texas. I don't know anything about Oklahoma State as far as what they are. Don't know anything about their defense for sure. I, I think like Oklahoma everybody, State's actually decent up front, though. Yeah. Well, and they were down on the offensive guys. side of the ball. No, uh, on the defensive side of the ball, like pass rushers, edge rushers, ed- edge rushers, like they were down to like three defensive tackles against Tulsa too. And everybody Chase Ford's really good. Who knew? Oh, I know. <laughs> everybody wanted to talk about you know Tulsa. Obviously, went to Michigan State, and you know you kind of walked out of that game thinking, okay, Tulsa's maybe decent on on the defensive side of mm-hmm. the ball. But come to find out, I think Michigan State's absolutely terrible. Yeah, Josh, they're they're awful uh guys i'm sorry i have nothing but love for michigan state this week as they murdered survivor series for me there's like five people (laughs) left so you have very little to keep track of now like i usually get one or two like that in the in the first four or five games since i've kind of changed the rules around to benefit me um but you know and for those members that are listening that don't understand why i do that Guys, I would spend three and a half hours adding all the names to the list of the teams that had picked correctly and making sure I had it right, who they'd picked. If I could call that out before we start the Big 12, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So that's been beautiful for me. But between that and then a couple of weeks ago, uh, who was it that got um, bad bad podcast? I won't won't go into it. But there have been two or three massive upsets that have – taken this list down from like 700 initial entries to seven i would think kansas would have been one of them no because it's it, the first uh four weeks i do it's not it's not big 12 play it's just it's three random games and i pick like really tough ones well everybody thought the arizona state michigan state was a freebie because i think michigan state was like a 13 point favorite in that game so everybody went with michigan state and I, they were, I, what was funny is I think some people were genuinely scared. They're like, what does Josh know? He's a Michigan State fan. He's got, like, is somebody out? Is somebody in? Like, so a few people, I think, backed away from it because they were like, Josh is up to something here. I knew nothing, guys. Like, I, I made a legitimate mistake, and I was like, shit, I shouldn't have put that game in there. And sure as the world, it worked out beautifully for me. So there's seven people left in a game that's supposed to go 15 weeks. Don't you think kind of Mark D'Antonio is going to be kind of one of the major dominoes that falls that finally pushes the Big Ten overall into the future? I mean, I know that they've had the Purdue's and uh, they've had, you know, Kevin Wilson went to Indiana and they've had some offenses. I mean, Ohio State's not really been behind the times or anything but you know they've had wisconsin iowa michigan state they've still had these three uh, when you have alabama who is now no huddle throw it all over the place and now lsu is no huddle throw it all over the place like who knew that the big 10 would lag behind the sec in terms of olds football well i watched a lot of that first half of alabama south carolina and i didn't think for the first half two or through one in front of the line of scrimmage like, it was just screen, screen, yeah. screen, screen. And I'm like, isn't this the exact play that SEC fans used to say was like an abomination to football? The dink and dunk. Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, we'd never do that. Um, okay. Well, we got, what, Michigan and the Badgers on Saturday. You're going to get a full full dose of Oh, your, my God. It's perfect, too. I think it's at hey. 11 a.m. I hope it's raining. Like, like, I mean, Army was the most exciting thing about watching Michigan and Army, and, like, they're not, you know, a great thing to watch generally. I mean – you see a team get the ball, and eight minutes later, the other team has the ball. I thought it was a great game plan by our commander in chief. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Eddie hit the nail on the head. We deserve snow in that game. Yeah. Michigan yeah. and Wisconsin yeah. should be a. I mean, it should be awful conditions, and it's it's too early in the season. We're not going to get what we deserve. Where did Horny Brook transfer to? Florida State, right? My God, that's right. Speaking of train wrecks, yeah. well, I mean that you know what that's that is Florida State's fault. What did Willie Taggart ever do to earn besides that job? have a decent program at South Florida? Oregon underachieved when he the one year he was there. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I just, I don't know. I, I've never understood what the infatuation with uh, Willie Taggart don't is. Don't you also, been. though, have to lay some blame on Jimbo Fisher, though, for leaving that shit show behind? He oh, stopped yeah. recruiting. He stopped yeah. caring about the program. <laughs> I think that's pretty obvious. I mean, the guy, Jimbo Fisher's a crook. I don't think there's any doubt about that. You want to talk about, like, UCLA having attendance problems? You see what it looks like at a Florida State football game? No, it was a bad... Well, I mean, you know, you've been there with me. It's not an easy place to get to. Like, if you yeah. don't live in Tallahassee, like, sure. if you live in a major city somewhere in Florida, it's a haul to get your ass to Tallahassee. Oh, yeah. So, like, they're, they've are they been known for when they play shitty teams, like, they won't have very big crowds. But when they're not any good, like, we're talking end zone, you know, empty type crowd. I saw an article just talking about, you know, Everybody thought Tennessee was on the up on the on the comeback. Nebraska on oh, the comeback. God. Florida State's on the comeback. Uh, who else? UCLA. UCLA. <laughs> I mean, it's just I don't know. USC's I, almost very, on that. It's dis- very not obvious back though thing. that there's a certain way that you have to play the game of college football right now, and I think there's some people that just don't get it still. What? Well, that's not to say that Scott Frost doesn't. I'm I'm in limbo right now in Nebraska. Yeah, I did pronounce I him don't... dead, but... I like Adrian. Yeah. So. He's just going to have to grow, right? Yep. I just think you look at... I mean, I saw a list, too, today about uh, teams... I can't remember who put it out. Uh, like, teams that changed conferences between, like, 2011 and 2014. And, like, it was only two teams, like TCU and somebody else, are the only ones that have above 500 records in that time. Because it was, like... And it's all these teams, and I look at them, and they've, they don't have natural recruiting grounds, and they've moved to conferences that don't have a lot of recruiting ground. Like the Big Ten, other than, I mean, Josh, where's the big recruiting ground in the Big Ten anymore? Ohio. Yep. And that's yeah, it, that, really? That's, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. I mean, and, and you're Chicago, not going to go in. I mean, Unless you are Michigan, you're not going to go into Ohio and beat Ohio State for anybody. Like, that's not going to happen. So, uh, you know, and we, we should be really careful because this is a topic of conversation. It might have been Missouri absolu- was the other one. Th- yeah, I think so, because they went to the SEC championship that first two years they were in that league. So, you know, but we should be careful because this will absolutely trigger our guy, John Tallman. He hates this conversation. He is convinced that tech, Nebraska's recruiting footprint has not been in, affected at all by <laughs> moving to the Big Ten. By move, yeah, he's like, oh, I, mean, I, I love blah, John, blah. but that's idiotic. I, I think it's crazy. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Well, look, if you're if you're Nebraska, I mean, Oklahoma needs Texas, but Oklahoma should be a pretty good example to Nebraska. Do they need about, Texas though? Like over the last well, decade. It, well, here's the thing: they it it makes it easier sure. that they have I Texas. Would, yeah, I would agree with that. But they're still going to Florida and California and North Carolina and wherever. To, I mean, hell, the D.C. area has been really good to Oklahoma, Baltimore. So, uh, I mean, Oklahoma should be a blueprint to Nebraska for how to be successful where they are. They just don't have Texas to lean on, but they can't do it. So in 2010, Nebraska signed five players from the state of Texas and had a worth a 22nd ranked recruiting class in the country. They are currently the 54th ranked recruiting class in the country and have one commitment from the state of Texas. Now, is that? I mean, that's two. That's I, I just randomly picked 2010, but it like you can't tell me that they're going to land four more guys from Texas. Like that, it's clearly impacted their ability to recruit one of the best states in the country that produces talent. And then they tried was to Don go into Sue, a St. Louis guy. Uh, no, he was. Um, I want to say like Northwest, like Seattle or Portland, Washington Oregon. Or Portland, Oregon. Yeah, like okay. yeah, it was something like that. Well, I think Nebraska there for what the last I don't know two or three years they tried to get a couple back doors into uh, Carlsbad, California, and. Uh, with uh, wasn't it Keyshawn Johnson's son, and mm-hmm. you know that didn't work out. Obviously, just, well, hell, even when they were in the Big Twelve, they could get they could get Oklahoma kids. Philip Dillard, I mean, they would pull a Phillip kid Dillard every once hit in a while. Hardest I've ever been hit in my entire life. <laughs> Literally knocked me into the air, not yard, not feet, yards. Like you were like my body. Line and he was a linebacker. No, it was like on a kick return or oh, something, okay. and he 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 almost killed me. 
That's a fact. So I, I'm just looking in, in Damakin Sue's page. Okay, so 2006, 2005 was the class he was recruited from. He officially visited Nebraska, Cal, Miami, Mississippi State, and Oregon State <laughs> were his five official visits. You think those five officials would be different these days? Yeah, and do you think like <laughs> maybe a few people missed on his evaluation just a little bit? Just a couple. I'm I mean, sure that he was I just... mean, Aaron Donald didn't have a lot of great offers coming out of oh, high school. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, but the thing, I, and that's what I always love, is like you'll hear coaches say, well, think of all the guys that didn't get recruited. Yeah, okay, or that weren't ranked high by these recruiting services. But then you'll see like, well, I'm looking at his offer list, and coach, you didn't recruit him either. So I don't know what to tell you about that. So it's it's always funny to me, like how the the rankings end up being brought up years later, but the fact that they weren't recruited by anybody rarely comes up. It's convenient. Yeah, well, very convenient. Sorry, just grinding an axe. We're good. That happens a lot with three stars too. People act like rivals hated Baker Mayfield. He was like a mid level three star. Like rivals liked him more than and he had, and, mean, and he had offers from Air Force in New Mexico and. Yeah, Wyoming was, or whatever. He had one. I think his best one was Oregon State or Washington State. I can't remember. Washington which. State is who it was. Well, yeah. See how it works out for him. <laughs> we don't know yet. We're sure still at, out. We're Riley, still figuring it out. Riley's just lucky that he got here. You know. Yeah, that whole thing. Like, God, you were just getting. I mean, there's no way that there are more than there's more than one person on this earth. That's arguing that Lincoln Riley hasn't really developed any quarterbacks. I don't. There's nobody there's, that it's not possible. Is worth is worth spending time talking about that would believe something like that. It's not possible. Uh, okay. It does that's slightly trigger me that somebody could even possibly think that though. When I was quiet early in the pod, I was finishing up a no, some number stuff that I was looking at. The QBR of the last five years of Oklahoma quarterbacks, including Jalen Hurts this year, which he's like 250. It's not going to stay that high. I get it. But just for the sake of the averages, it's 203.6. That would be the, that average is better than any player of the last five years, not including this year. Kyler Murray's best year prior to last season was 109.19 at AM. Mayfield in 2013, 127.68. Hertz as high as a starter was 150.7 in 2017. I don't know how else to say that, but the numbers make it abundantly clear that all three of those guys improved tremendously in the time they spent with Lincoln Riley. By the way, uh, there's been two major media outlets that come that have come out with uh, Heisman straw poll so far, The Athletic and the USA Today. There may be others that I haven't seen. Maybe ESPN's come out with something after three weeks. And I've been kind of surprised that Jalen Hurts leads – both those polls as much as he does over Tua. I think I've said it on the podcast before, but Jalen Hurts is the only person in America that could have come to Oklahoma and have a decent chance to win the Heisman. To win the third Heisman. Because of a, I, I don't want to say a love affair, but people like Jalen Hurts. They love the story, which it's hard not to like. But at yeah, the same it was time... Like Tanner Mordecai right, and just he's putting being up the same elevated numbers. and, and you're having great numbers... People would have just been like, yeah, hey, look at Tanner Mordecai. And I think what when nice I say story. that, it almost comes off as a slight to Jalen Hurts and what he's accomplished so far. And I, I don't mean that in any way. I don't mean it to be a slight or to be a, a diss at him. It's, he's been very, very good. But I would also say it's been three games. Let's see what he does when uh, when, when he gets when it's, when it's nut, when, Yeah, and, when it's nut cutting time. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'll say this. The, the one thing... Josh, to me, that stands out about the first three games, and you mentioned uh, Parnell Motley. I, I don't know if you were joking when you said he's, he's looking like a draft pick. Um, he's been great. I'm not going to lie. Carrie, like, like he has grabbed the he's lotion as you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed the pledge. I needed some kind of lubricant. That's the only thing in the room. Um, so, no, but, God, that's so disturbing, that image now that I can't think of what I was saying. Well, if you can't think of it, I do have a, a thought out. that I want to Oh, yeah. Give. No, 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 no. Okay. About uh, Parnell Motley and, you know, play. here's the thing, though. Like, OU is getting ready to play all these teams that all they do is they come out and they say, yeah, let's see if we can complete a deep ball in this play. Like, every play, that's what they do. 
So they haven't faced any of those teams yet. So I'm really curious to know what's going to happen when you line up against a Devin Duvernay and a, and a, and a Colin Johnson at the same time. And a, what happens when, I mean, just like Trey Norwood, everybody loved Trey Norwood until Tylen Wallace went one-on-one with him. And then everybody wanted to throw him away, put him in the garbage, like Baker said. So, I mean, we, I'm just not ready to say that the corners situation is solved. I think it'd be wrong to say that it is. Until I mean, we just, see yeah, this, yeah. I mean, Baylor, not, not so much even Texas Tech, but Texas, Baylor, Oklahoma State. Like, I'm certainly not in the group that, that thinks, you know, oh, well, they did the same thing through the first three games last year, and then you, then look what happened. If you can't see that they're playing better defense, if you can't see that front, things, yeah, are, things are much improved, that's a you problem. And like, you know why why the, the the corners are playing better? is because they're so much better up front. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It all goes hand As in hand. As Alex Grinch calls it, his top-down defense. Absolutely. There's 100%. So, I guess I had to be the one to crap on Parnell Motley today, Josh. Well, I mean, you know, now now I'm leading the fan club. That was your official <laughs> resignation. So, wow. I'm here I'm here to take over. You got the Thanks. torch now. Yep, it's it's a it's a heavy one to carry and I Parnell, I will throw it as quickly as I can if you give me reason. But for now, I got it for you, buddy. Uh later later tonight, uh there'll be meetings next to each other, the Parnell Motley fan club and the AD Miller fan club. Josh will only be at one. Yes, I'll, I'll be throwing tomatoes at the other one. <laughs> Not even in the same conference room. It's going to be or, different or perhaps, Or perhaps just bags of clipped hair just throwing at them. <laughs> oh my God. By the way, uh, Jason Kersey, is, uh, he's, very, he's, he's very mad about your, your uh, haircut. He feels oh, like, is he? He feels like you should have had to shave it all the way down. You know, and I, as we discussed, or maybe it was he doesn't feel like it was. I think he said that it was an affront to bald men. Yeah, I think that's exactly (laughs) right. Yeah, like you pretending like you did something, like shaving your head. I'm using air quotes. Is is basically yeah? It's an affront to bald people because you're not you're not you haven't shaved anything. Kersey's one of these guys that like expects me to like put shaving cream on my head and like shave it with a buck knife like i'm gonna take it down that was never gonna happen and i can at least understand the argument in the eric swenson bet the ad miller bet i made it clear when i said it i will not be shaving it down to the skin that will not happen and honestly the fact that the sides of my hair are currently longer than the top of my head i look like a bigger asshole enjoy that idea because i look more stupid because I didn't just shave the whole thing down than if I would have done it the way or than doing it the way I've done it. So I, I look worse for what I've chosen to do. How long do you think it'll be before, before you have uh, your first haircut? I would guess Christmas-ish. <laughs> I mean, it, it's going like, to be a while. But you'll go like, get it trimmed, won't you? Or does it not grow I, that I, well, fast? I'm going to have to on the sides. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's the the haircut I'm talking about. Yeah, that that, that will have to happen Um, and try to slowly let it even out together um, because it's going to be very mullety if I'm not real careful. Now, as someone Um, who does this every year, yeah, you have it goes in stages. Yeah. So my now I will say, I mean, just full disclosure, my hair grows really fast, so it's it's not going to be that big of a deal. But I hope Kersey's not listening right now. I yeah, Jason. Like it grows back really thick and long, and it's just really pretty, oh you know. God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, and I can say Tiffany is also cheating the system so that I don't screw up Christmas card pictures. Uh, she has me taking something that like women take after pregnancy to get their hair to kind of come back. It's take it's called biotin or something. Oh my god! So I, I'm taking these so that my hair comes back. This is the stuff you have to do when you're married. Well, you don't need to make babies anymore, so I guess you can do whatever no, you want to yourself. Exactly. I'm like, whatever. You know, as long as the hair comes back. It's one of my few vanities, okay? What if it reverses the vasectomy and you end up having like three-armed kids? Oh my god. Well, that's horrible. <laughs> Bob, do you need another kid? You can have one of the three-armed kids. Bob had, dog, had step out. doggy diarrhea to take care no, of. No, I think he's doing a radio oh, hit. Oh, no. 
No, that was uh, we hadn't mentioned Bob's dog ailments this week. It's just awful. Apparently, it sounds a terrible. Dog just shitting everywhere. It's not fun. I've been there. Do you sense a? And I, it's easy to say, I guess, through three games, but like a different tone with this team as far as like I know Baker wanted to win, we know Kyler wanted to win, but it's almost like they've been to the they've been to the bottom of the mountain right now, or or they've been to halfway up the mountain. They want to get mm-hmm. to the top. It's like we know we haven't done anything yet. You think it's going to be a sense of because that's kind of what Jalen Hurts says after yeah. every game yeah. is basically you know great to win but haven't accomplished anything do you get the sense that the whole team feels that way i get it's it's more like maybe from the veteran guys that we've talked to i don't know if it's that as much as it is just they don't want to recognize any accomplishment that they've had at all like it's all and you know alex grinch said this the other day and it was kind of surprising he said uh we're on our way to becoming a great you know, going from good to great as a practice team. Yeah, and that's important to him. Very important to him. And I just, I think yeah, that's I almost just, more important to him than how they perform on Saturday. I is think that it they're might be, prepared yeah. well Monday through Thursday? I mean, it, it it's just a team that knows they're at the beginning. That they haven't. That's the the vibe that I get. It's like even if they go out and beat Tech and they beat Texas. I mean, beating Texas would be. I think an accomplishment for this team, and then they would start looking maybe you know at things a little bit differently. Then they could start talking about you know winning a championship or competing for a championship. Until then, being self motivated is just going to be huge because it just doesn't look like there's much out there to keep this team fired up. I will say that when someone asked Lincoln about the Big Twelve in general the other day. Like he was, it was kind of like, shit's about to get real. Like this is a this is a legit conference this year. Like he didn't want to say like, it's good. This is going to be the toughest one, the toughest Big Twelve championship to win because that would like devalue anything that they've done. But I think you could kind of tell he knew that this is this is going to be a gauntlet like they haven't faced. So I get what I see from that is like thirty point wins are now twenty or fifth or fifteen. I don't. I'm not as, as worried about the conference still. I just think these games will be a little bit more competitive. You have to play your starters into the fourth quarter. As you don't think this conference is clearly better than it has been the last few years right now? I think it's, After the non-conference slate's over? I think the bottom is raising its level up to where there's not really a bottom, but I don't think that bottom can do anything against the top. I think yeah. Texas is better than they, are last, than they were last year. Well, they're the, yeah, they're the... It's Texas, maybe Iowa State, maybe O. Uh, but you're talking about the bottom. Yeah, Iowa State. You're yeah, talking I, about the bottom. I'm, I, talking, I'm not a yeah. big Iowa State believer. I'm anymore. talking about the bottom, like, but not not the bottom, but even the middle. Like Oklahoma State was the middle. They're better this year, maybe. I, I think mean, like three to seven is better than it's been in a while. Like, it, it, like what, I think one and two are clearly one and two from everybody else. I think three to seven, like when you talk about whether it's. Oklahoma State, TCU, Kansas State. There's good depth. Yeah, like, Kansas I can make a case. State. I mean, yeah. my God. I mean, when in the- by the way, Bob and I were t- doing hand gestures that entire time to do up okay. and down. It was weird. <laughs> I'm a hand talker. And I always have been. <laughs> no, but you made me a hand talker. And I'm usually not. I'm like, I'm raising my hand up. Like, I'll do air quotes, but I never. It's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm a big hand talker, and the air quotes is lame. Don't do that. No. I do what I want. No, sir. As, as as representing all hand talkers, including Bob, no. You were having a tea party earlier today. What are you talking about? You don't... You, don't <laughs> you were, weren't you? Uh, sir, we were playing with the Barbie jet and the Barbie <laughs> camper. Okay, there was no tea party. You have scolded me for being a single man this week on Facebook, which I never even post on Facebook. And yes, oh, I, my fire alarm is still going off as we speak. I, I de- deactivated Facebook. I don't have a clue what you guys are talking about. That's admirable. It's interesting. Did, Bob, did you feel younger when you did it? I did. did yeah, I thought you Oh, did. it's been, it was like in June or May. Oh, it's been oh, wow. glorious. <laughs> oh. Now everybody hates you, though, because you never wish them happy birthday. This is true. 
You don't get to see the little balloons fly up when you say happy birthday. I'd be pissed too, Bob. I actually don't wish people happy birthday unless I really, really know them. Oh, I am one of those people, like, if I'm... If I'm pretty confident we haven't talked in two or three years, you're you're going to come off my Facebook friends. Like I, I am the same way with the. I, everybody knows I love a good Twitter unfollow. I love to unfollow people on Facebook. I will unfriend people I knew from kindergarten through senior year of high school. Like I, I don't care if I don't talk to you, then I don't have any need for to see what your mongrel children are doing. I don't care. <laughs> people don't think that you have mongrel children. They may. I, I I don't care if they do. Like I, I, I have no interest in your life. That's interesting. All right. Um anything yeah. recruiting wise. Absolutely. Par- oh yeah, Aaron Parks um coming up. Uh, live announcement uh, on rivals down to his final three. I mean, are we kidding ourselves here? We know what's gonna happen, don't we? I I, I think Oklahoma, Alabama Oklahoma fans and North be, Carolina. Yeah, I think Oklahoma fans should be paying attention. You know, I'll say that. Um but no, I like I said, I, coming out of his official visit, I, everybody I talked to said it just went extremely well. We are not, uh, by the way, Eddie and I are not driving through the night to go to this commitment announcement. Take from that what you will. I'm still waiting for you guys to tell me. Okay, we're gonna go. We, 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 we made up our mind. Let's we're go to go. Maryland. I mean, Let's we talked Maryland. about it, but I don't know. Coming off the UCLA trip, it's, and that was it's more the timing. Doing it back to back weeks is hard. But plus, that, we're just such jinxes. I mean. But that doesn't count as the South, right? He committed to Oklahoma when we were there. Like, it's not really a <laughs> jinx. You so mean be, Jacob Phillips? Yeah, it's not yeah. like Jacob Phillips picked the Tigers when you drove to the, the place. What, Eddie, what Eddie's saying like he is... Went in a, he well, went he in a, told us to come. I mean, he he said, hey, I'm having a ceremony tomorrow. You guys might want to come to this because I'm going to come to Oklahoma. But don't tell anybody. So we got in our... Damn car drove our asses to Nashville. Watch the Cubs. Watch the Cubs. It was a, a momentous viral video. It's uh, too bad I quit watching baseball. But <laughs> <laughs> it's gone that bad, huh? Really? Um can't beat the Reds. So oh that is bad. Um but I'm fan. not worried about him not committing as much as if he does commit not sticking. Not sticking, yes. Uh, you know, to be fair, I mean, nobody has decommitted while we were on campus. So clearly the problem is we should have just stayed. We'll just, whenever we go stay to at a Oprah's major... high rec- school. <laughs> yep. You're just <laughs> going to stay there. with Jacob Phillips for eight months, and then it's done. That was a cool high school. I mean, it was super old. And it's changed a little. Now you got the early period. You only have to do it for three months. You don't have to go to February, just December. You're going to miss Thanksgiving with your family, but That's you'll be okay. there for Christmas. You'll be there for Christmas. I did like that, uh, pardon my take, rant about Lions fans the other day. About how they've just, if you have season tickets for the Lions, you've just decided that you are no you no longer have a family because you never spend Thanksgiving with them. Or it's the per- uh, it's the perfect out. You're spending time with your family, but you're actually your season ticket family. Yeah. <laughs> you're just going to the game, you know. And at least as a Cowboys fan, and I'm it pains me to give the Cowboys credit for anything. You've probably in your lifetime seen a Super Bowl. Detroit's not seen an NFC Championship game. I mean, they've seen like two playoff games. Yeah. Why do you have season tickets in the first God. place? God. And I mean, and to top it all off, you live in Detroit. It's kind of like being married to someone that just cheats on you all the time. And you just stay married to him. I don't know many, but when it was 24 6 against the Cardinals, Lions fan I knew was like, there's no way we win this game. <laughs> like, Kyler came back for the tie. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah, I mean, but Parks, he's out there. There's some eyeballs out there. Could they match up? I think that's what we're waiting to find out. But, Josh, you say OU fans should definitely be tuned in? I, I definitely think they should be. I mean, there's a um, – like I said, I, w- with the two others, North Carolina has some connection to his family. Uh, he's got a, His grandmother lives down there, and they're apparently quite close. And I, I think North Carolina has pushed that angle some, that he would be closer to family than he would with his other two options. I think with 
Alabama, there's still some question of where he fits into their numbers and where the, where he is with them. I really think this comes down to Oklahoma and North Carolina. Um, I'm, you know, I, I put in a forecast, I guess about two weeks ago for Oklahoma. I haven't heard anything to change my mind on that, but I mean, it's Mac Brown and Tim Brewster. I've Dude. I've seen crazier things happen. It every year it seems like there's one of these commitments that Oklahoma ends up getting that just kind of flies under the radar. Nobody really, it doesn't get its it's due, like, I is guess, this in the a next way. Orlando Brown. But, I mean, this guy's the number 60th ranked player in the country. And he was the MVP at Rivals 5 Star. He was incredible. Yeah. And it always felt he liked OU more than OU liked him. I know. <laughs> oh, I, I, I can remember Eddie and I talking when we interviewed him in Atlanta, and I was like, I don't know if Oklahoma's going to get to him. You know, like, it just didn't feel like, because at that time you thought it was Jonah Monheim. Yeah. And now Oklahoma has gotten, they've moved on from Jonah Monheim, a, a, a really good four-star player, to a top, borderline top 50 guy in the country, according to Rivals rankings. So, I mean, it's it's just a sign of what Bill Bedenboe's doing. That's why, like, you know, back in the spring when everybody, when OU lost out on, you know, a Gunby, and then they lost out on... Um, Turner. Oh, T- Turner Corcoran, like everybody's like, oh no, the whole class is falling apart. Man, tap the brakes. Like it, it's Bill Beanbo. It's going to be fine. Just give it time. And now Oklahoma, for the second straight year, has one of the you know two or three best offensive line classes in the whole country. And it, just to kind of, I guess, further that point, uh, Beanbo talked about EJ and Doma Ogar and uh, Stacy Wilkins yesterday. You can just tell those are two guys that he loves he absolutely loves those guys and what they could be when it's all said and done i thought ej would be a center but it sure seems like he's set on guard and that's not a bad thing it looked like you could have wilkins and ej sort of your cornerstone there on the left side you know the i I, i've there's a lot of ways you can look at this but i there is a chance that stacy wilkins is the highest drafted offensive lineman that oklahoma's had in the beat and bow era. Like, Ooh. he's a, I mean, 6'6", six, six, can move his feet. It's tremendously long. I mean, if he puts all of his physical tools together, that's a 12-year NFL left tackle going to a whole bunch of Pro Bowls. I mean, like, he is tremendously gifted. It's just a matter, like I said, it's a matter of if he can put it all together. Or sure. Not. And it's, I mean, like, the fact that he's already getting bills, because, I mean, that was kind of the thing you wondered, and it was a lot like Marcus Stripling. When he gets to the college game, is he going to step forward? Like, is the challenge of playing better opponents going to push him? Or is he kind of the guy that we see on tape where, wow, he flashes, but there's not a lot of consistency there? And in both cases, it's worked. I mean, Oklahoma's rolled a good number because they both look like guys that the competition factor has made them kind of wake up and say, I still have a lot of ways to go before I'm, you know, what I can be. And they both played last two games so i don't think they really yeah, care I, about the four the i don't i don't think rule somebody asked me on the board i don't think they're gonna redshirt either of them no i mean you've got to think i mean stacy wilkins might be their guy i mean i you know we'll have to see what happens there Eric swinson obviously just being a a junior but you, you i mean you've got to think he's a definite part of their future plans at left tackle sooner rather than later yeah the redshirt class seems to be like it's going to be pretty small I mean, Rattler. I think seems like a guy they're going to try and. You just have shirt. to believe these guys are that good. They no one's going to yeah. be a red shirt senior who's going to mean a lot. That's just the rarity. Like Neville, yeah. Neville Gallimore's aren't going to be around that much more. And it'll have to be somebody that just comes in like undersized, you know. That yeah, or know gets you hurt need to or get in the way room. Know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it would. It, it's going to happen, but it'll suck when you know a freshman plays five games and then gets hurt. Then you try and get a medical, I guess. Yeah, depending on how many snaps they had. Now, I don't think Weez didn't play. Or did Weez play against UCLA? Theo played the he, fourth he quarter. Did. Yep. So he I would say that, that catch against we, Mordecai. We thought he had, and then turned out he didn't catch yeah, it. Yeah, okay. The ball was tipped. Yeah, it seems like the fact that his one of his first plays was a 37-yard touchdown that looked that good, they were like, oh, shit, we can't redshirt him. Which I don't know. I mean... Th- uh, we haven't talked to Theo. We haven't talked to Trajan Bridges. So we don't really know kind of wh- where their heads are at. But, I mean, Theo's just so – he kind of has re- resting resting bitchy face. 
Because you know he's not he's a good kid to talk to. But he just looks he just kind of looks surly. Well, I think that he, But once he CD, starts talking to you, he's a great guy. I thought CD kind of hinted at it yesterday just as far as talking with uh talking about Jaden Hazelwood and, you know, just how they were different as freshmen and mm-hmm. he said something to the effect of uh he didn't say he was more arrogant than I was, but he said that he's very I said, confident. He did. I said, yeah, I said, <laughs> what does he have that you didn't have as yeah. a freshman when you came in here? I think there's a little bit of a a little bit of a humbling that you have to go through as a freshman. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing for some of yeah. these guys. But yeah, I, mean, I didn't think about it that way. He basically said, yeah, I wasn't as big an asshole. Yeah, I mean, paraphrasing, that's basically Which what he said. Which isn't a bad thing. No, yeah. it, it's not. I think that some of those guys need to go through that before they really become part of the offense. And that's still to say, I, I, I said it last week, and I think I said it on the postgame pod after the South Dakota game. I think that Jane Hazelwood's going to make some plays for this team at some point yeah. in the season. Well, I was surprised he didn't do more against UCLA because that was kind of my hot take of the game, you know, my hot prediction. But I, there will be a game coming up sometime soon where he just, I think, busts out. And I went the other way because I asked Rambo, are you having those talks with those kids? Because you went through this yourself two years ago where you were the, the, the hot stud coming to campus, redshirting, and now you're like, wait, what the heck's going on? So he just yeah he just just trying to tell them to keep their heads up and their their time's going to come and he's a great example because he's the leading receiver through the first three games you don't get down in the dumps you keep doing what you're being asked you're t- you're going to get your number called yeah and it's a I think it's just a thing too of just having an opportunity I mean he has an All American in front of him I don't think there's yeah. any doubt about that look at a guy uh, another freshman in Jaden Davis. He's taking advantage of the opportunity, and he's going to get more playing time because of it. Well, and, you know, we going into the season, we were surprised when they finally released the depth chart, and Charleston Rambo was an oar along with the freshman, Bridges and Wees. And he's not an oar. No, he's no longer an oar. <laughs> he is definitely the number one. So he's he's done as good a job as anybody from the that, start of the season to now to establish By himself. far my biggest miss of the season was thinking that Rambo would be passed up. By now. Yeah, but you also thought, kind of like we all did, that he'd be the second leading receiver no, this year. No, he needed to be, or he was going to be passed up. Yeah. It was going to go one or one or two ways. That's sort of what my feature is going to be about Rambo coming up here soon. He had one one or two ways this season was going to go for him. All right. Uh, any other last order of business you guys want to get out of here before we break for this week? I don't think so. Georgia-Notre Dame this weekend. Same time. OSU-Texas. OSU-Texas. OSU, Texas. Texas. Auburn, a and I guess that's interesting. Kind of intriguing. Michigan and the Badgers. Michigan with him. I, I will. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, how I'll, often do you get a game that worthwhile at 11 o'clock? I mean, we ne- you never get a good Big Ten kickoff at 11 a.m. It's always Northwestern and Purdue or something. Pray, pray for Alabama. That, They're playing at 11. It might be hot down in Tuscaloosa, too. Is that on it's Fox? It's hot in the south? Yes. Yeah. It's on Fox. See, well, that game's actually thing, being played on the sun, Josh. Here's the thing that's <laughs> happening with these games is like Fox is getting really good ratings for their studio show now that they have Urban Meyer in there. And so they're trying to make 11 o'clock games yeah, they, like their thing. They've admitted they're yeah. not doing the prime time, especially when you got baseball playoffs that will start running into things too. But they said flat out 11 o'clock is our big game. So, and it's, it's working for their ratings. So that's why you're seeing it like that. All right. Uh, appreciate it, everybody. Uh, thanks to uh, MidFirst Bank uh, for being our new uh, title sponsor this season. Uh, and make sure you go check out that website, MidFirst, uh, midfirst.com slash U40, U40. Uh, sign up for your uh, official OU credit card, uh, rewards card with MidFirst Bank. So thanks, to Josh. Thanks to Eddie. Thanks to Bob. Uh, we will see you guys right back here next week on the Unofficial 40 Podcast from Soonerscoop.com.